All right. So, you know how we think we've pretty much figured out the ancient world? Like, we have a handle on how things worked and what they built? Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to blow your mind. On March 15th, 2025, a press release dropped, and it basically hinted that there's something absolutely massive hidden beneath the Khafre Pyramid at Giza. Yeah, and this isn't just like finding another golden statue or something. Right. This is like next level stuff. It could completely change how we think about ancient Egypt. It really sends shockwaves, you know, through archaeology and well beyond that, too. Because we all know those iconic pyramids, right? Khufu Khafre Menkar, mm. silhouetted against the desert. Practically the poster children for ancient Egyptian ingenuity. They're massive. And for over 4,500 years, we thought we knew what they were all about. Built around 2,500 BCE as tombs. That's the standard story, right? Incredible feats of engineering, for sure. With what we thought were pretty basic tools and a ton of manpower. Yeah. But this new discovery, it suggests something way more. Way more complex. So in this deep dive, that's exactly what we're going to investigate. What are these claims about a huge subterranean complex under the Khafre Pyramid? How did they even find it using all this crazy tech? And what do the experts and, frankly, everyone online think about all of this? Right, because the reactions have been all over the place. So for you listening, we're here to help sort through all the hype and figure out what's really going on, what's the real deal, and what's still just speculation. Okay, so let's zero in on this Khafre pyramid. Yeah, because that's where all the action is supposedly happening. It's the middle child in terms of size. Not as big as the Great Pyramid. But it's still colossal. 448 There's... feet tall. Yeah. And what's really cool, it still has some of that original smooth limestone casing near the top. Wow. Yeah, you can really imagine how impressive it must have looked back in the day. Totally. And traditionally, it's always been associated with Pharaoh Khafre, son of Khufu. Okay, Khufu built the big one, the Great Pyramid. Right. And what's interesting is that the internal chambers in Khafre's pyramid are actually pretty simple. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, the Great Pyramid has that grand gallery and all these different chambers and passageways. But Khafre's pyramid, not so much. Yeah, much more straightforward. So the idea that something big, like really big, could be hiding underneath it is especially intriguing. Right? Yeah, it's like, wait, what's going on here? There's got to be more to this story. Now, the group behind all this, they call themselves the Khafre Project Team. Led by Corrado Malanga from the University of Pisa. And Filippo Biondi from the University of Strathclyde. They're making some pretty wild claims. Pretty wild is an understatement, I'd say. And they're basing their findings on this technology called synthetic aperture radar, or SAR tomography. Yeah, it's pretty cutting edge stuff. Combined with what they call Doppler tomography, which involves analyzing seismic vibrations. So, you know, like the Earth's subtle movements. Basically trying to listen to the Earth mm -hmm. to figure out what's hidden beneath. Exactly. Now, according to their press release and some follow-up talks, they've detected a whole bunch of very specific structures. Specific and absolutely massive. Yeah, so first of all, near the base of the pyramid, they're saying there are five identical multi-level structures. Each one with five horizontal levels, sloped roofs, and these geometric passageways connecting them. Yeah, it's like they're saying there's a whole mini city down there. And they're speculating these could be chambers or rooms, but they don't know for sure what they were used for. Okay, so five identical structures already sounds pretty wild, but then it gets even crazier. Buckle up. They're also claiming to have found eight vertical cylindrical wells. These things are enormous. 648 meters deep. That's over 2,100 feet going straight down. Straight down into the earth. And get this, they're arranged in two parallel rows of four running north to south. Like a giant ancient grid. And each well supposedly has these spiral pathways winding around the inside. I mean, come on, that's not just a random hole in the ground. That screams deliberate engineering, right? Like they built these for a reason. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, what on earth were they moving up and down these wells? Or who? Exactly. But wait, there's more. We haven't even gotten to the biggest stuff yet. You're telling me there's something even bigger than these giant wells. Oh, yeah. Much bigger. They're saying they found two cubic chambers. Each one is a mind-blowing 80 meters on each side. That's like 260 feet. So basically, we're talking about two massive cubes buried deep underground. Yeah. And these are supposedly located at a depth of about two kilometers. That's 1.2 miles down. So not just under the pyramid, but way, way down. Deep underground. 
And here's the kicker. They're saying that these two giant cubes connect the whole underground system. Under all three of the main pyramids. That's what they're claiming. So it's not just about one pyramid anymore. We're talking about a potentially massive interconnected complex. And they've also mapped this huge underground network stretching horizontally for about two kilometers. Which is way beyond the footprint of the Caffrey Pyramid itself. Right, it's like they're suggesting there's this whole hidden world down there, and it could be even bigger than the pyramids themselves. It's mind-boggling to even think about. Now their spokesperson, Nicole Ciccolo, called this a groundbreaking study that redefines the boundaries of satellite data analysis and archeological exploration. Strong words. Yeah, and the lead researcher, Corrado Malanga, he went even further. He said that when they zoom in and analyze their data in more detail, they're going to reveal what he called a true underground city. A whole city. Down there. And get this, they're even suggesting that this network could be the location of the legendary Hall of Records. The Hall of Records, wow. You know, that mythical archive of ancient Egyptian knowledge. Right, and the stories about it, they've captivated people for centuries. So we're talking about a potential discovery that could be absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. But the big question, of course, is how do they even see all this? Yeah. And how much can we trust the technology they're using? Exactly. So let's dive into that a bit. You know, how do you see through miles of rock and sand? Well, this SAR tomography, it's basically like an X-ray from space. An X-ray from space. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. It is pretty cool. But it's also very complex. So you've got these satellites orbiting Earth hundreds of miles up, and they send out these radar pulses that penetrate the ground. So they're sending signals from space down into the Earth. Right. And when those pulses hit something different, like a change in density or a void or something, they bounce back up to the satellite. Like an echo. Exactly. And then they use all that data from the returning signals to create a 3D image of what's down there. So they're piecing together a picture of what's underground based on these radar echoes. Yep. But, you know, interpreting those signals from miles down, it's not easy. And there's a lot of room for error. I can imagine. It's not like you're getting a crystal clear photograph. No, not at all. And what the Caffrey Project team claims to have done is they've taken this SAR technology and they've added another layer of analysis. They're calling it Doppler tomography. Doppler tomography. I'm trying to picture this. So basically, they're using two satellites about 420 miles above Earth, and they're beaming signals down to Giza. Two satellites working together. Right. And what they're doing is they're converting the returning signals into what they call phononic data. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're translating those radar echoes and the seismic vibrations into sound waves. They're listening to the Earth. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And they're using special software to analyze these sound waves. They say it lets them detect these tiny, tiny vibrations like millimeters that might show where there are hidden cavities or really dense objects deep underground. So they're not just looking at radar images. They're also listening for subtle clues about what's down there. Exactly. And it's really important to remember, this isn't their first rodeo with SAR and technology at Giza. Back in 2022, they published a paper in a peer-reviewed journal, Remote Sensing, and they said they found internal ramps and thermal anomalies inside the Khafre Pyramid. So they've used this tech at Giza before, and they found something. Right, so they have some credibility in that sense. And now they're saying this new Doppler tomography thing has let them create a 3D model of this whole alleged underground labyrinth. Chambers, wells, tunnels, the whole shebang. And that's what they're presenting as evidence, right? Yes. This 3D model is their proof, in a way. But this is where it gets tricky, right? Because even with all this fancy tech, there's a big question about whether they can really see that much detail at a depth of two kilometers. Yeah, that's the crux of it. I mean, picking up some anomalies in the data is one thing, but can you really say for sure that those are chambers and tunnels and all that? Especially at that depth. The Earth's subsurface is incredibly complex. You know, different layers, moisture levels, all sorts of things that can mess with the radar signals. Yeah. So it's definitely possible to misinterpret the data. So even with the best technology, there's still a lot of uncertainty. Absolutely. Now, let's just play devil's advocate for a second. Let's say, hypothetically, that their findings turn out to be right. Okay, so we're assuming they're not making it all up. What then? What are the implications of all this? It would be massive. Yeah, it would basically turn everything we thought we knew about ancient Egypt upside down. First of all, it would totally challenge the idea that the pyramids were just tombs. I mean, if there's this huge complex underground, 
bigger than the pyramids themselves, it's got to be more than just a burial site, right? Right. It would force us to consider all these alternative theories that have been floating around for years. Like the idea that the pyramids were part of some ancient energy grid? Exactly. Nikola Tesla himself was fascinated by the idea that pyramids might harness natural energy. Yeah, Tesla was always ahead of his time. And then in 1998, Christopher Dunn wrote this book called The Giza Power Plant, where he argued that the Great Pyramid was actually a machine for converting seismic energy into usable power. Okay, that's pretty wild. So how would this new discovery fit into that theory? Well, those cylindrical wells, maybe they were conduits for channeling energy. And the giant cubic chambers, maybe they were some kind of storage or processing units. It's all very speculative, but it's definitely an interesting connection. What about the theories about a pre-flood civilization? There's a lot of talk about that online. Yeah, and it's interesting that the researchers didn't mention the 38,000-year age in their original press release. Oh, so that came later. Yeah, in a later briefing. So they're saying these structures are way, way older than we thought. Which ties into the idea of a lost civilization that was wiped out by some catastrophic event. Right. A civilization that was more advanced than we give them credit for. And this underground complex, maybe it's a remnant of that lost civilization. A hidden legacy. And then, of course, there's the whole Hall of Records thing. Right. The researchers are even hinting that maybe they found it. This mythical library or temple filled with ancient wisdom... It's the Holy Grail for a lot of people. So many mysteries. And when you think about how precisely the pyramids were built, their alignment, the math, it does make you wonder if this underground network could be part of some bigger picture. Like a grand design we haven't even begun to understand. Yeah, exactly. But on the other hand, we have to be realistic here. Right. We can't just run away with these amazing possibilities without considering the other side of the story. Which is that a lot of experts are really skeptical about all of this. Very skeptical. Mainstream Egyptologists, they're not buying it. They're saying the pyramids were built during the 4th dynasty, around 2630 to 2510 BCE. Which is what we've always been taught. Right. And they point to all the archaeological evidence we have. You know, they found the workers' villages, skeletal remains that show the hard labor involved. Yeah, like in Dr. Sarah Schrader's study from March 2025. Exactly. So they're saying, look, we have a pretty good understanding of how the pyramids were built. We don't need to invent some lost civilization or ancient energy grid to explain them. So it's really a clash of two different worldviews, isn't it? It really is. And some of the most prominent Egyptologists have been very vocal in their criticism. Dr. Zahi Hawass, he's a big name in the field, right? Oh, yeah. He's like the rock star of Egyptology. He called the claims completely wrong and fake news in an interview with Aram Online. Wow. He didn't hold back. No, he didn't. He said that the base of the Kafa pyramid was carved out of bedrock. So there wouldn't be room for these huge underground chambers. Okay, that's a pretty strong counter argument. And then you have Dr. Hussein Abdel Basir from the Bibliotheca Alexandrina. Another respected figure. Yeah, he said the claims were exaggeration and deception. Ouch. And he doesn't believe that SAR technology can really see that deep with enough accuracy to map these detailed structures. So basically he's saying the technology isn't good enough to support their claims. That's his take. Yeah. And even Professor Lawrence Conyers, who's an expert in geophysical archaeology, he said the underground city idea is a huge exaggeration. Okay, so a lot of experts are saying, hold on, pump the brakes. Yeah, they're urging caution. <laughs> and one of their big concerns is that this new research hasn't been peer-reviewed. Yeah, that's a crucial point. The researchers published a paper in 2022 about the anomalies inside the Khafre Pyramid, and that was peer-reviewed. But this new stuff about the underground complex, they've only presented in press releases and at conferences. So other experts haven't had a chance to really scrutinize their work? Right. And that's a big red flag for a lot of scientists. You know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And they want to see the data, the methodology, the whole nine yards. And on top of all that, there's the Egyptian government to consider. Yeah, they haven't exactly been super welcoming to projects that challenge the traditional view of ancient Egypt. So getting permission to dig under the pyramids, it's not going to be easy. Not easy at all, right. especially with big names like Dr. Hawass pushing back. So it's a really complicated situation. On the one hand, you have these mind-blowing claims, but on the other hand, you have a lot of doubt and skepticism. And meanwhile, what's been happening online 
because you know the internet loves a good mystery. Oh yeah, the internet has been on fire with this. <laughs> on platforms like X, people are going crazy. They're calling it the most important discovery ever, comparing it to sci-fi movies, talking about aliens, ancient power plants, lost civilizations. It's a whole thing. And it's not just random people, right? Even Joe Rogan weighed in. He has a huge audience. Yeah, millions of people listen to his podcast. Yeah. And he said the discovery was insane and mind-blowing. So that definitely adds fuel to the fire. It does. But at the same time, there are also a lot of people online who are more skeptical. They're questioning the researchers' credentials, pointing out that Malanga is also into UFOs, that Biondi is a radar expert, not an archaeologist. So they're saying maybe these guys aren't the best people to be making these claims. Right. And they're also focusing on the lack of physical evidence. They're saying, show us the proof. Don't just tell us about it. So it's a real tug of war online, just like it is in the academic world. Yeah, you have people who are completely convinced that this is the biggest discovery ever. And then you have people who are rolling their eyes and saying it's all hype. And where does that leave us? What happens next? Well, the researchers say they want to do excavations to prove their findings. Which would be amazing, but also incredibly difficult, right? incredibly difficult. Getting permission from the Egyptian authorities is going to be a huge challenge. And then there's the logistics of actually digging two kilometers down. That's not your average archaeological dig. No, it would be a massive undertaking. And there's also the risk of damaging the pyramids. Yeah, you don't want to do anything that could harm those incredible structures. Absolutely not. So for now, the researchers are saying they're going to keep refining their data, release more images, try to build their case. Hopefully that will sway some of the skeptics. Or maybe it will just lead to more speculation. Who knows? Only time will tell. For now, the Khafre Pyramid is still standing there, silent as always. And the mystery of what lies beneath, it remains unsolved. It's such a fascinating story, and it really gets to the heart of how we approach knowledge and evidence. You have these extraordinary claims, but no real proof yet. And it forces us to ask, how much are we willing to believe based on what we're told? Right. And what role does intuition play versus hard data? It's a great reminder that sometimes the most exciting discoveries are also the most controversial. And that skepticism is a healthy part of the scientific process. You know, for you listening, I think the story really highlights the power of critical thinking. We should always be questioning, always be seeking out different perspectives. And be wary of jumping to conclusions based on incomplete information. It's like that old saying, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Exactly. And maybe, just maybe, the real mystery of the pyramids isn't about what they are, but about why we're so obsessed with them. What is it about these ancient structures that keeps us coming back, keeps us searching for answers? Maybe it's the sense of wonder, the connection to the past, the possibility that they hold secrets we haven't even begun to imagine. And maybe that's the most exciting part of all. The not knowing. The mystery that keeps us exploring. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll have those answers. Or maybe the mystery will always endure. Either way, it's a pretty amazing journey.